like the freshness in my mind is the is the generation i'm sorry the generosity um practice so i guess like um the uh i guess like the success here was um so when i was going to work on i think okay yeah have a good night yeah so when i um when i went to work on i think it was tuesday or or wednesday um mm -hmm. i saw uh the lady that i've given like a like a dollar to like three four times already and mm -hmm. it was like rush hour. she was sitting on the base of the stairs um I didn't really have time to like read her sign but i walked over and gave her a dollar and i think like she was really happy like she actually smiled and i think she recognized me which is great um, mm -hmm. um because then that means uh, next time i'll actually stop and talk to her <laughs> like that's one thing that i haven't really done yet which is like i haven't like just stopped and like talked to her um i i stopped like to give her like to, to get like fish a dollar out of my wallet but i think that was it um then there was another quite memorable case um i think it was on friday it was either on friday or thursday mm -hmm. so this one i didn't end up giving i think it was a like a lady like a guy i, I don't i don't even know like what the gender was um, cause I didn't even directly see like that person. Um, so what had happened was I was on the subway and my back was facing the center. So, you know, there are chairs here and I'm holding like the rail like this mm -hmm. and something like that. This person comes in and out of nowhere, um, he just says, you know, um, it's ridiculous. I, I, I have nothing. Um, it takes, I, I, I have to like shell out like eight weeks of rent up front um for uh, for uh, like to live here in the city eight weeks and then he said something along the lines of i just lost my grandmother um there were days that i've been sleeping like in the subway for the past three months there were days where um i just ate um leftover yogurt out of somebody's yogurt container um i got like a cigarette rubbed in my face when i asked for people like asked for help from people um and then I think he so was, he said all of this while just no, while he was standing. So was he talking to anyone in particular or no. just talking to himself? He was venting at people on the train. He was just like just vented like to everybody on the train. And then he was like, honestly, if I jumped down and um, like into the tracks right now, it would it wouldn't even like bother anyone. Like it wouldn't even like dent anybody's day or something like that. And at that point, I remember there was a struggle where I was like, like maybe I should like give like give him something but at the same time okay this is I think maybe is like a post rational like post rationalization of why I didn't give him anything but at the same time I remember feeling like some kind of like fear like because the stuff that he was describing was like like terrifying I was like oh my god like I was like oh my god so like like it was a really strange mix of like fear or aversion where like if somebody tells you some like horrible gruesome details you kind of like oh i, I, I don't, I don't want to hear it like oh god like like that kind of thing so i didn't really end up like giving him like a dollar mm -hmm. maybe i thought like and then afterwards like he just left like at the next stop and when we got there um he just left and got off the next stop uh, and then of course i was like hey mate i was thinking like oh like maybe if i gave him something maybe it would have made his day better uh maybe he, mm -hmm. like, i would have shown him like uh some kind of value that like, you know, maybe, maybe it's not as bad. Yeah. Um, yeah. Have a good night. Yeah. Um, so then at, that, at that point I was like, well, the guy's like off the station anyway. So this is just like a lesson in like uh, some regret. So it's the past. So I should just come back to the present, but yeah, that Cause I think that guy or that woman, cause I couldn't tell at all. Like when that person left the station, they had like a beanie hat on. And their voice could have been like a raspy woman's woman's voice. Mm -hmm. um, I just couldn't tell. Like I didn't even like like look at them. <laughs> that was like the most memorable one there. There would have been another possibility that you didn't mention, and that would be the possibility that if you had been generous, perhaps another on the uh, train would also have been generous, uh -huh. and that might have even sparked an act of generosity in a group. Right. And that everybody that would have been possible, but yeah, since, right. you, like, since like, oh, you didn't wow. take the first opportunity, we don't know. Yeah, so I so I kind of felt like kind of like oh man, maybe like oh I mean I was like if I gave him a dollar, oh, maybe it would have made his day like really like nice. So you know, I was like oh, but I was like all right, well this is like another lesson, you know, like just like 
I was like, all right, nothing to do now except come back to the press. I was like, he got uh-huh. off the stop anyway. Well, yeah. this it's really interesting for you mm-hmm. to note the regret. Yes, yes. Because you're right. already practicing generosity, so mm-hmm. you can now um, recognize this the next time it happens, mm-hmm. and that you can sort of squelch that stinginess inside and mm-hmm. say, never mind, I'll give. Okay, got it, yeah. Because I remember, like, like that guy like sounded, like, whoever that person was, they sounded, like, borderline, like, I don't know, like, maybe, not really, I'm not sure if suicidal is, like, the right word, because, like, that was what, like, was kind of terrifying, that they were just, like, venting, like, towards, like, the entire, I guess, like, subway car. So I found that kind of terrifying. Um, but I was like, oh, maybe, like, yeah, I think it's because, like, maybe like the environment seems so cold to them. So after they got off, I was like, oh man, I think that $1 or more what like must have like would have made like a, like a large difference. I think like it's even hard. like compared to like the normal, normal homeless people with this, like the signs you see on the street. And I thought, yeah, maybe giving it to them would have made like a much larger difference. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah. This is yes. what compassion is really all about, is, is about thinking about others. And so I'm really <laughs> pleased that this uh, <laughs> um, um, toy that we, we have uh, uh-huh. of giving a little money to the homeless in New York is mm-hmm. really a, a valuable uh, learning skill, teaching skill for yeah. you. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then in terms of like uh, the other thing, so like uh, working with uh, the Zen master here. Yeah, most of the time, um, most of the time, I think it's it's actually going fine. It's it's not as bad. Um, I'm trying to I'm just trying to remember if there if there were anything like that was like really notable, uh, because most of the time now, it's like you know when I when he speaks to me, I just have to be a little like I just watch out for the competition. Um, and if I see it like that, then most of the com- conversations are like, okay. Like I, I don't really end up like lashing out at him. Maybe I'll like lash out like a sentence or two. If he gets me really wild up or like, or when, or when my attention is kind of, I can split like some, like the only case I can think of is I'm playing like a game with my, with my brother and we're <laughs> going like at it. Like it's like a real time strategy game where you have to plan this and plan that. Um, and so of course, Zen Master has to be like, oh, you guys shouldn't be playing games, blah, blah, blah. And then, of course, he throws some, like, swear words in there. It's only, like, in that instance where my attention is not really fully on what he's saying that, you know, I lashed out, like, one sentence. But immediately afterward, like, it's okay. Um, so it's productive. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm surprised that a lot of the stuff, like, yeah, once I start seeing, like, more and more, like, I guess, like, competition everywhere, yeah, I can feel like, um, some of the stuff is like dropping off, which is great. <laughs> like I was like, oh, I don't get triggered that easily. <laughs> um, that's that's the amazing part, mm-hmm. and that um, we see that in many many different places. The amazing mm-hmm. part that I'm talking about is is that once we fully see something, we have mm-hmm. a great deal more choice Mm -hmm. about it Mm -hmm. it's only when things are are cloudy they're ignorant we don't know what's going on only then are we out of uh out of control or out of uh culture so i I have like one question actually this is more of like a theoretical like like question so we talked about like one fighter right right? the lower fighter was like belief in like a personality like personality like a self and um, now, 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 competition is listed as like a more subtle, like um, a fetter. Mm-hmm. So um, it seems to me that like for all the inst- instances of competition that I see, right, there's ones that come with like a thought that like, like a really quick thought that says like, oh, maybe I'm not as good as they are or oh, what happens if they're better than me. Then there are other ones that are slower building, such as when I talk to the Zen master, like he, he said, oh, you, you guys are doing it wrong, this, that. And it's not so much like you, you have like a, um, like a thought that says like, uh, oh, I, I this, but you kind of just feel like there's like a, like a, like a knot or something because he's saying something that you don't like. So 
is is that is this the reason why that uh, competition is listed as a separate fetter than the belief in personality view? Because even if you don't have a personality view, let's say that like, you don't have those thoughts that that you don't really believe in those thoughts. That's like, oh, I, I maybe maybe he's better than me, or like, oh, I'm doing better. But you can still have those like not like like feelings like of like, oh, not liking. Is it is that the reason why that they're like two separate fetters? Um, um, let me give a stab at that uh, mm -hmm. in this regard. Mm -hmm. First off, sometimes the personality view is also listed as or taught or spoken of as a doctrine of self. Mm. Now, in the sense of a doctrine of self, that means like the Brahmins are teaching that there is a soul or an Atma mm -hmm. or an Atta. Mm -hmm. And that uh, the Buddha actually um, did not prefer mm -hmm. to uh, pin his entire teaching on the quality of is there Atta or not. Mm -hmm. All okay. right. That his teaching has to do with suffering and no suffering. Mm -hmm. How, however, the suffering and no suffering is deeply wrapped up in the Four Noble Truths. Mm -hmm. And the question is, how can you get a student mm -hmm. to really, really deeply investigate the Four Noble Truths if they have a belief system mm -hmm. that does not show the Four Noble Truths as shining and uh, worthwhile? Mm -hmm. All right. And so, in fact, there are three kinds of then delusions that the student has to get through. Mm -hmm. One of the delusions is uh, the delusion of the doctrine of the self, mm -hmm. which is taught by other religions, mm -hmm. which also includes reincarnation or rebirth and, and uh, a consciousness that lives from lifetime to lifetime. All right. right? So this is a doctrine. Mm -hmm. All right. To where the, what we're talking about at the other end of the scale, a, uh, a manna, mm -hmm. uh, which we 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 have translated as conceit, mm -hmm. that how it manifests itself, and one of the ways for us to see it is mm -hmm. by seeing things as competition, which is something that's below or beyond feelings that in the beginning we want mm. to have our skill set mm -hmm. and our knowledge of the Eightfold Noble Path to deal with feelings so that mm -hmm. we can get those under control. Mm -hmm. But after we really understand feelings, we can recognize, oh, I can also be competitive without even being angry at someone. Oh. And in fact, that's what sports is supposed to be all about. And uh, warfare when it's really, really well taught. Oh. Is to do warfare without anger or mm -hmm. without vengeance, but to do it as a skill. All right. So mm -hmm. competition is also like that. Um, and even in, there are many, many cases, in fact, Mm -hmm. where um, it is, let us say, convenient for the winning of the game to mm -hmm. get your opponent angry. Oh, if like the bait. opponent, yeah, bait him into getting angry, because <laughs> if you can get him angry, then he's full of emotion and he can't think straight. Oh. Also, if he is exposed, as if he's exposing himself to anger, uh, people... Uh, feel bad about that. They don't like it, and so they rebel against him, and they start to favor the one who's cool. Mm. And so uh, he also um, is not capable of managing his body very well. Uh, mm. That's why tennis players will throw tennis rackets or or bust up their equipment or what not like that is because they're so full of emotion. Okay. Mm -hmm that they can't even play the game. Uh, so if you recognize it from that perspective, that mm -hmm. that's why the Buddha set these things in the layers that he did so that you can see that, oh, once I'm capable of dealing with anger, mm -hmm. now I can see clearly the competition. 
the mm-hmm. answer to that is, well, it depends because you don't have to be 100% clear from anger to mm-hmm. see the underlying competition. That, in fact, if you start to see that underlying competition, it'll mm-hmm. actually help you rid out some mm-hmm. of the later or the deeper qualities of the anger. So you mm-hmm. dig down deep enough through the anger dig down deep enough through the greed of wanting to be the champion. Mm -hmm. And that's when we begin to see that underlying that is a conceit Mm -hmm. of I am. Um. (laughs) In fact, there's a very famous phrase. I could have been a contender. That was in one of the Rocky movies. (laughs) Oh, because it seems like all the the instances of the competition that I've seen in my own experience, most of it comes with like a feeling of not liking first. Like, like you, you kind of not like the thing that's like going on and you're like, Oh, I can do better. Or like, or it's the other way. Like, Oh God, I don't like it because like they might be better. Like, Oh, so it's always like, like preceded by like the not liking. And it depends on how strong the not liking is. If it's really strong, then maybe, and if you're getting challenged, then maybe it turns into anger. Maybe it goes the other way and it turns into embarrassment uh, or, or something else. And, but mm-hmm. yeah, it always seems to me like there's, there's something that like, you just kind of don't like it. And then like, then like the thought comes in and you're like, oh, look, look at that. Like, <laughs> yeah. wow. Well, I'll, I'll let you in on a secret about myself. And that mm-hmm. is, is that it was actually quite easy for me to handle criticism when the criticism was just because it gave Mm -hmm. me something to do Mm -hmm. or something to look into. But Mm -hmm. when people would say things that I felt were unjust, Uh, that's when I want to set the thing right. I can't uh just accept it as a gift and understand, well, I don't need that particular gift. It's like a shirt that doesn't fit. Oh, gotcha. Gotcha. I but see. instead, what I would do, would I would get, engage in conversation that mm-hmm. was motivated towards getting them to change their opinion. Mm-hmm. 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 But that's manna, that's conceit. Oh, gotcha. That's manna, that's conceit. Gotcha. And, and the way that we find our way to that, here's mm-hmm. another way of looking at it. This, these, these fetters are also... Mm -hmm. underlying tendencies Mm -hmm. as opposed to anger Mm -hmm. is a as is an eruption or a manifestation of that which is let us say lying in wait wait, waiting for an advantage Mm -hmm. okay and that Mm -hmm. perhaps another way of looking at it is is that the self-preservation instinct Mm -hmm. Its most prominent way of, um, let us say, manifesting itself mm-hmm. is through this manner, through this conceit that gives rise to uh, feelings. Mm-hmm. All right. So mm-hmm. as we're dealing with the feelings, we get down to the point mm-hmm. that we can see through this manner, see through this conceit. Mm-hmm. And then we get right down to the very basic thing, which is the I am. I am that I am. Oh, I All right? And at the, at the higher level of just manna, that's <laughs> when I am better. I am better than this. Or I'm good enough. Mm-hmm. Or I'm no good. Mm-hmm. All right? So we're always comparing ourselves when we're in this state of uh, comparison. We can constantly <laughs> are comparing ourselves to our friends, our moms, our dads. We start doing this when we're kids and we're doing it kind of as background processing that is as least as fundamental uh-huh. as being, uh, for instance, facial recognition. Mm-hmm. Okay? When you recognize someone's face, when your dad comes into the room, you don't have to do a whole lot of facial processing. Mm-hmm. To do oh. that recognition, all right? It's gotten, it's gotten to the point where I can hear his footsteps, and I'll know that it's him. <laughs> okay, exactly. So you know what I'm talking about. Uh, so this manna is underlying and, and ready and waiting and available. In fact, it comes right out of the self-preservation instinct. 
And that uh, one of the ways that we can see that is with the animals, the mammals, even the, uh, in fact, a good example would be chimpanzee or the higher primates, that they already have that competition. Oh, gotcha. So this competition is built right in. Mm -hmm. It's, mm -hmm. it's part of the DNA. Mm -hmm. It's, it's oh. part of the instinctual programming that we, that we arrive on planet Earth with. Can this can this actually be completely like undone? Like this instinct, can it be completely? It can be completely known. Oh, okay. It can be completely it, turned off. Okay. Not necessarily completely turned off, but when it is turned on, it's more like a trickle, and it's a whole lot easier to deal with because you know exactly what's going on. Gotcha. I see. I think actually, like the themes that we're talking about here, I think the Dhamma is actually giving me an excellent lesson now. Um, okay, so do you mind if we stop the recording for a little bit so I can explain some context about my work? Then we can resume the recording, and then in pre, like, and then in next like lessons, we can actually bring this back up because I, I like right now I'm not like exactly comfortable about like explaining everything like recorded. That's why. That's okay. So we'll sign off now and then we'll continue the recording. Let's see okay. what I can do here. All right. Okay. Anybody yeah. listening? Bye bye. We're finished. <laughs> I'm going to do something else. <laughs> Back online, like, maybe like after I finish explaining. <laughs> okay. Right. Bye bye. Bye bye. Okay. One second.